There's a blue stick cap, so I automatically have to like this handheld. Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today I'm going to be taking a look at the streaming device, the Absolute. I'm going through a bit of a streaming renaissance right now as I converted my AYN Odin 2 into a full streaming device with moonlight and everything local to me and changed my whole computer around, got it all working perfectly. So it comes at a really good time that the Absolute arrived because it's a similar device that would handle anything to do with streaming, albeit a lot less powerful than the Odin 2 is. So I'm super interested to see how this device compares to that for my use case. As well, I'm going to be doing a separate video that's just on streaming and my setup and how it all works. But this device here is meant for playing your favorite PC, Xbox, and PlayStation games over either your local network or through the cloud with remote streaming. If you're at all familiar with the Logitech G Cloud, it's a similar product to that. This retails for $209 US dollars plus shipping for the 32 gigabyte model, or add $10 for the 64 gigabyte model. And if you use code JOEY10 at checkout, you can save $10 as well. In comparison, the G Cloud is 350 US dollars, so this is a big difference. Now, before we get started, I do want to share that Absolute did send me this device for review, but they haven't seen this video ahead of time, and they have no input in anything I say. Right off the bat, let's talk about the specs of this device. And the big things to note is that there is an MT8365 processor inside, a big 7-inch 1080p display at 60Hz, Hall sensor sticks, and it touts about 8 hours of battery life. We're also running Android 12 here, so we can install any normal Android app and emulation if we wanted to. I didn't find that this processor is really great for anything like that though, so I'm going to be skipping all of that in this video as it's just not something that you're going to have a good time with. The processor is kind of the weakest part of this device, and I found it to be quite sluggish in a lot of just normal Android usage. But this device is mainly meant for streaming, and not really that point, so want to see how it performs in streaming where the processor shouldn't matter too much. I wish I still had my G Cloud as it would have been the perfect comparison to do with this device, but let's take a quick tour of what it offers. We have the Hall sensor sticks here, and it's a bit disappointing to see switch style sticks here, especially given the G Cloud and other devices have better sticks. Especially for the type of content this plays, which is more modern games, you really do need better sticks. The D-pad is a loose feeling D-pad, although I wouldn't say it's false diagonal proof. It's one of the weirder feeling D-pads I've used and it's hard to explain, but it's also just serviceable. The face buttons themselves are a nice size and feel good. Probably the best part of the controls of this device. Then we have the select and start buttons, as well as the back and home buttons. All of these buttons are clicky and fine, and there's no complaints here. Looking at the top of the device, and we have the clicky L1 and R1 buttons, as well as analog triggers, which are nice to see. Then the volume buttons and power button. On the bottom, we have the SD card slot, headphone jack, and USB-C charging port. Let's talk about the USB-C charging port, as I was baffled to find out that you can only use a USB A to C charging cable. They specifically have a warning to not use a USB C to C charging cable. That's a bit weird in 2023, although it's familiar for a lot of us that are using Ambernic and PalKitty devices and all of that, but for a device like this, it's weird not to have USB C charging. From an in the hands feeling, it's definitely less comfortable than the G Cloud was. And I would say this isn't particularly comfortable. It's not bad, but they made the device extremely flat, and it feels a bit weird to hold. There's nice finger holds on the back that curve to how you hold it, and all of that is good, but I find the device sides just dig into your palms a little bit, especially with how thin they are. 
Let's jump into some games to see how this performs. I'll be cycling through different games on different platforms here. So Moonlight, GeForce Now, XB Play, which is for Xbox, PS Play, which is for PlayStation, and we'll go through each one. I'll also try different spots in my house just to see if it changes. Now, everyone's experience with streaming is going to be different because it all depends on how your network is set up in your house. Is your router stuck behind a furnace in the basement three floors down? You're going to have a bad time here. But if you have actual Wi-Fi coverage with Wi-Fi 5 or 6 devices and you have good coverage throughout the house, then you're going to have a really good time here with how this operates. So first up, let's use Moonlight to do local streaming over my local network to my PC and we'll play some Lies of P. I'll leave the streaming stats up on the left so you can see some of the important information and the actual PC stats on the right. But we're running at a full 1080p 60fps here and we have a pretty low decoding and latency time. To me, I can't feel any latency at all and I'm a bit further away from my access point. One of the benefits here for local streaming is I could use my desktop's GPU and I'm maxing the game out at max graphics and playing it on this device at full frame rate. It's a great benefit that some of the other x86 handhelds just can't accomplish. Staying with local streaming for now, let's check out XB Play, which allows local Xbox 360 and Xbox One game streaming from my Xbox Series S. XB Play has been a great app for this, and I've been working my way slowly through Lost Odyssey again, which is an awesome use case for this, and I can do it all from the comfort of my couch. One major benefit here is this is a lightweight handheld, so I don't have to hold something heavy like a Steam Deck or the Asus ROG Ally. Last up on the local streaming front is PS Play, and this lets me connect locally to my PlayStation 5. It basically mirrors the screen to your absolute, so you could keep the TV on if you wanted and you can see gameplay on both at once. I've actually been using this to play Final Fantasy 16, and if your network coverage reaches outside your house, you could even play outdoors if you really wanted to on your patio. So what I've shown so far is exactly how I've been using my AYN Odin 2, and the absolute seems to handle it just fine as well. I did notice the decoding time was a bit better on my Odin 2, but both of them have been working just fine. So let's take a look at actual cloud streaming, remotely, and we can start with xCloud, and I'll be using the XB Play app for this. Now, xCloud has been finicky for me on my Odin 2, mainly due to the fact that Microsoft themselves doesn't use enough bandwidth to cover the content that they're sending out and so we can get pixelated, choppy footage in a lot of cases. It's why I really prefer local streaming instead. The absolute is the same here, and pulling up Starfield, you can see that it isn't perfect. It's playable, but I get a better experience using Moonlight on my PC, but obviously not everybody has access to that. However, on the opposite end, there's GeForce Now, and that service is actually fantastic and I've been playing around with the free tier on my Odin 2. Let's check out Assassin's Creed Mirage, which I have using at Ubisoft Connect. GeForce Now has the best latency and feeling out of all the remote streaming platforms that I've used. It's not Netflix style, so you actually do need to own the games you want to stream on whichever platform, so Steam, Epic, Uplay, and it's also not every single game either. But I discovered something weird, and that's the Absolute was having trouble playing it at 1080p in GeForce Now. My Odin 2 had no issues doing that at all. I'm not sure if it's processor related or something else, but I found it pretty weird and I stuck to 720p for all of my footage. So let's wrap up my thoughts here at the end. In a vacuum, I think this would be a good device. It's underpowered, but it sets out and does what it wants to do, which is streaming. Now, for comparisons to this device, there's really only two that I can think of. The first being the Logitech G Cloud that I mentioned before at 350 US dollars right now. That is, unless you were one of the five people that got it for 150 US dollars uh, two weeks ago. 
Or like I keep mentioning, we have something like the AYN Odin 2, and that's retailing for 300 US dollars for the base model. So from a price perspective, this is the cheapest model out there to do just cloud streaming. And if that's all you want, then you know what you can get. But if you want to do a little bit more in any situation where you might be offline, then the G Cloud or the Odin 2 would be better options. I showed off the G Cloud in different videos, but you can do up to GameCube in emulation, and the Odin 2 can do everything. The Odin 2 is more of the same. A smaller screen, much better controls, bigger battery life, a fantastic Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor that current generation Samsung phones are using, and you can actually play the full library of PlayStation 2, GameCube, Wii, and even Nintendo Switch. Plus, it does everything the Absolute does, but this is all at $100 US more than what the Absolute costs. So I think it sort of comes down to this. Do you want to spend the absolute least amount on a streaming handheld that can just do streaming? And if that's the case, then yeah, the absolute is a great option. If you want to do a bit more without streaming and not having internet, and if you're out on the go, then I think you might want to look at the G Cloud or the Odin 2, and my vote would be on the Odin 2. The G Cloud right now is in a weird space because it doesn't make sense at its current pricing. It definitely makes sense if you can get it at $150, but that just isn't gonna happen for many people. For me and my use cases, I'm gonna be sticking with the Odin 2 as that just covers what I want better. But I don't think the Absolute is a bad device. I think it's the best budget device to do cloud streaming if that's what you're looking for. That's going to be it for this one. Let me know in the comments below, have you dabbled into streaming at all? And I mean actually tried it with setting up everything properly and doing all of it correctly, because it's not really plug and play. You can't really just turn it on and go right into streaming. And so on that topic, like I mentioned before, this isn't going to be the last video I'm going to do on streaming. I have another one teed up that's going to show you my setup. Don't forget to like and sub to help this channel grow and hope you all have a good one.